Hey there, survivors. How's it going? I'm your host, Douglas here at Drumway Productions, bringing you another Scream Movie Mask Guide. And today we're finally going to be covering the long-awaited Scream 6 Movie Mask Guide. And I want to start by saying that this is going to be the most complicated Scream Movie Mask Guide that we have done thus far. There are many, many different masks in this film, many different types that are seen as like small cameos, quick appearances, and then of course for the main killer masks, because we have somewhat a return of almost all the different ghost face masks, there are a lot to cover because even those masks have individual versions. I also want to say if for some reason you're watching this and you have not seen the movie, this is going to be a pretty spoiler heavy mask guide because we're going to talk about, you know, which scenes these different masks were used in. And with that comes some spoilery type content and maybe even images on screen. So yet again, if you have not seen the movie, be warned, you're going to be spoiled. And with that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive in. And I think we're going to go ahead and start off with the lesser important masks that just make a quick cameo appearance, maybe once or twice in the background. Things that aren't going to be typically like the killer masks. And to help model the masks so that I don't have to hold them the entire time, we'll be placing them on this Drew Barrymore death scene Scream 1 bust. And to kick things off, we'll start with the Pride Ghostface mask. This can only be seen during one scene in the film, and it's pretty much just a quick blink if you miss it type appearance in a Halloween party. Some of these quick appearance masks won't be shown for too long, so I won't put them on the bust. But I'm sure many of you have seen these by now. It's pretty much just a rainbow painted hard plastic ghost face mask. And yeah, like I said, they just make a very quick appearance in the film. The second lesser seen cameo mask is the one that kept me waiting. Here we have the bling ghost face mask. This thing is pretty beautiful if you like shiny things, and it actually does have a sparkle shroud to it. As for how it was used in the film, this makes a very, very quick cameo appearance in the subway scene. Yet again, another one of those blink and you miss it type situations. But yeah, for those of you who are completionists, be on the lookout for these this Halloween season because it technically is in Scream 6. The next cameo mask is kind of sort of a killer mask, but it's not being seen worn by the killer when it's being used to kill or anything like that. I'll explain a little bit deeper. Here we have the hard plastic ghost face mask. This also did make an appearance in Scream 5, and this is pretty much the same thing as the hard plastic pride mask. Of course, those are just painted with rainbow stripes. Unlike the other masks we just took a look at, these actually did make several different appearances in the film. One of which is the subway scene where many other different mask types are shown. Then it's also seen on the TV footage where they mention that mask sales are through the roof. You can see a few of these there. And then you can also see it in the ghost face shrine for like the stab souvenirs. You know, it's supposed to be like the original stab costumes, but instead of having a Gen 2 or anything like that, they just have one of these on display. And another quick one that many of you may have missed is actually kind of sort of makes it a killer mask, but like I said, not being worn by the killer. This is used in some of Richie's home footage. So it is a type of mask that Richie would have had. And to cap off the non-killer ghost face masks, we have, of course, the classic ultra white. This is actually seen during several different scenes in the movie, and they're actually kind of used all throughout the film whenever Ghostface is wearing a mask. It's pretty much common news at this point, but I'll go ahead and let you guys know. For the actual screen used masks in Scream 5 and in Scream 6, to help get that very particular shape that the mouths have, they pretty much cut an ultra white in half right below the nose and shoved this chin inside of the chin of the regular EU masks. So they're used in that way, but not really seen in that way. As for the scenes where they actually are seen on screen, these make an appearance in the subway scene. They also make an appearance in that TV ghost face mask sales of skyrocketed scene, as well as yet again in Richie's home footage. So yeah, there you go. With Scream 6, the ultra white has even more connection to the films. All right, now we're moving on to actual killer used mask styles. And I just want to say as a blanket statement, from this point on, pretty much every style of mask that was used in the film was a 25th anniversary EU stamped mask. For the most part, they had their shrouds removed, they were reshrouded. Some of them did have that ultra white modification that I mentioned, which is just a mask shoved inside of another mask. 
If you want to be even more specific, the second run of the 25th anniversary masks is what was used for Scream 6. Now, these actually did have the blue dot problem, and in some of the stills in the original trailer, you can actually spot it on some of the masks in the movie. But regardless of that, they did have clean versions of the mask used in the film, as well as all of the aged masks were made off of these. They were de-shrouded, modified, and then re-shrouded with an entirely new type of shroud, not the same sparkle shroud that came on it, and then used for the film. So for the most part, from this point on, if you're just trying to have the same style mask in your collection, second run, 25th anniversary is what you're looking for. Just to keep in theme, we'll cover their non-killer uses first, and then go ahead and move into the killer masks, and of course, these were worn by Ghostface killers as well. A clean 25th mask was used in the subway for the fake out Ghostface. This is the one who seems like he's approaching and he is actually wearing one of the true like hero killer robes, but it's not a killer seemingly because they just walk right past our main characters. So pretty good fake out, very nice costume, but yeah, he was wearing one of these. These also can be seen in the subway being worn by some other patrons. And of course, these also make an appearance in the TV clip where they talk about Ghostface sales going through the roof. And I believe the last non-killer appearance that these have is in the Ghostface Shrine. They cut up one of these in place of cutting up a KNB or an original Gen 1 mask for the Principal Hembry mask. Now, as for this being used by a killer, this was technically used by Quinn towards the end of the film as well, whenever Mindy gets attacked. So, that's one of these. We have a nice, clean 25th anniversary. Then, another killer that uses a clean 25th anniversary, well, it's only clean for a little while, is Jason. Jason does use one of these in the opening scene, and whenever he goes home and puts it on display in his own personal ghost face shrine, he has another 25th anniversary, and I think that one actually did have the sparkle shroud still attached. So that's pretty much the most clear-cut example of one of these being on screen. Now moving on to the ghost face killers of the past. If you've seen the movie, you would know that they pretty much have, for the most part, all the different killers' masks. There's definitely a few that are omitted, but they leave them behind at the crime scene. And of course, one of these winds up in evidence on behalf of Richie and Amber, and it also was left behind at Jason and Greg's house. And I think that pretty much does it for the appearance of the clean 25th anniversary mask. After that, we get into the aged masks. And I suppose, to stay on theme, we'll go in descending order just like they did in the movie. So you would know, that makes the next mask, Jill and Charlie's mask. So, for this one we have yet again another EU, and it's a 25th anniversary that was modified. And these do make appearances in a couple of different scenes, but as far as I can tell, there's only one version of the mask. After Ghostface flees the bodega, he leaves behind one of these, and that happens to be a mask with Jill and Charlie's DNA inside. So we see it on the ground at the bodega, and you also do see it when it's presented as evidence. As for the aging on this mask, it's pretty basic. It just looks a little bit yellowed around the eyes, maybe just a tad bit darker than a fresh, nice new Ghostface mask as well, but not heavily weathered by any means. It doesn't really seem to have much texture, just some discoloration. Moving down the list, we make it to brother and director Roman Bridger's mask. Roman seems to be the fan favorite for most people amongst all the different aged masks, if you're looking for something realistic that is, just because it is pretty much just like a slightly yellowed, slightly aged mask. You can tell in the close-ups that it definitely does have a bit of texture to it, so I have added that to mine, but for the most part the aging on it is not too drastic. There also seems to only be one version of this mask seen as well, and it is presented as evidence. So you see it in a few different shots in the evidence room or up on the board, but it's pretty much just like a slightly discolored ghost face mask with just a little bit of texture to it. Where were we again? That's right, Billy's mother, Miss Loomis. This is the first aged mask style that actually does have more than one copy. From here on out, things are only going to get more complicated because there was several stew masks and several Billy masks that were used. But this is the first one that only had two styles. As for the aging on Miss Loomis's mask, personally, it is my favorite. It's not too heavy, but it's not too light either. I really particularly love the yellow around the eyes, like some old aged eye mesh glue. And then as far as the cracks, they're not too heavy, but they're not too subtle at the same time. I guess for some of these that have these more intricate details, I'm going to have to flip back the hood so you guys can really see the work here. But I did actually texture all of these using the same methods that the artist who worked on the film used. So 
These are all pretty textured. Now, as I mentioned, there are a couple of different Miss Loomis masks. There's a hero version, and there's one that we're kind of nicknaming the coat mask. The coat mask is pretty self-explanatory, so I'll go ahead and give you that definition here. It's pretty much the mask that is used when the killer removes it and then places it on Miss Loomis's bloody coat. The second one being the hero mask is mostly self-explanatory. It's pretty much seen in the rest of the scenes where you can see that mask nice and clearly. And like I said, guys, personally, out of all the different age masks, this would probably be my favorite. And just like the other masks that we've shown, I will show you guys different pictures of the different versions of these aged masks as we go through talking about them and listing them off. Because like I said, from here on out, it only gets more complicated. I got Stu Mocker's mask. He's my favorite. All right, let's go ahead and talk about Stu's masks. So for this particular mask, there are three versions that I could tell apart. There's the main hero, as we're going to call it, the one that is primarily used. There's the reveal one and the reveal two mask. So let's go ahead and talk about the hero first. The main hero stew mask is not seen very long in the film, unfortunately, but it is still the one that's seen the most compared to the other two versions, which are almost splitting hairs, even mentioning different versions on those. So for the first one, you see it whenever Ghostface first appears wearing that particular mask, leading all the way into the reveal or like the unmasking scene. So when they're first setting up that appearance. It's also used in some promotional shots, and it's also used, most notably, whenever Chad is getting stabbed. Then we have the Reveal 1 and Reveal 2 mask, which appears to be two separate versions of the mask that were kind of back and forth in between shots. They swapped into different masks. This wasn't, like, in storytelling that's what happened, but it's just something that happened on set. They could have done this so that more people could take home a screen-used mask or it could have been that they were just trying to utilize the different versions of these. And I'll go ahead and touch on that once we get to Billy's mask, but of course I'll have good reference photos to give you guys examples of what I'm talking about. As for the weathering on Stu's mask, this one in particular would have to be neck and neck with Nancy's. I feel like as far as being realistic, Nancy's mask looks a little bit closer, but as far as just cool look, personally, I love the look of this mask more than Billy's. I know that many people love Billy's, but I love how this one's like really aged and it's got some cool cracks and really nice areas, really nice texture to it, but it's not like too heavily aged. Now we only have one mask left, Billy Loomis. Arguably the main Scream 6 mask because it's seen pretty much throughout the entire film. It's on the cover artwork. Many of the promotional material was just around this one. And uh, it's certainly a really, really interesting looking mask but there are many, many versions of the mask that appear on film. There are slight differences in between all of them, making the appearance for the most part consistent. A lot of the same damage in certain areas are you know, present on all the masks, but they're definitely a little bit different, different placement, different textures for each one. And I'm not going to talk about the differences in between each of them, but of course I will kind of name them by scene that they appear in because we can identify those versions based on the scenes that they're shown in. Typically there are good close-ups, but not always. So without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about the many different Billy Loomis masks. We'll start off with the main hero mask. This one is seen during the opening of the film, during Quinn's death, and also during Gale's attack scene. This mask is also basically the forefront, like main version of the mask because it's seen on pretty much all the promo material it's seen on the cover of the movie, if you got that version. It's just the main one used. It's pretty much the main hero mask, pretty much of the movie. The second hero mask that is used in multiple scenes can be seen during the psychiatrist's attack scene and can also be seen pretty much during Quinn's death scene, but it's after Ghostface breaks into the apartment um, after being seen through the window. So pretty much when he starts attacking the main characters all the way until Mindy's girlfriend meets her demise. The third hero mask, which is shown in pretty great detail and is used for a pretty good amount of screen time, is the bodega mask. This one, like the many others that I just mentioned, are different. They're all different. So they're minor differences, but if you watch the film and you really try to match it all up, you'll be able to notice these things. And of course, I'll try to put good pictures on screen to kind of give you guys reference, but it's not really worth pointing out all the tiny little details in between them. The next mask is used during the ghost face reveal scene. This is the one that is handed to Sam when she's told to put on the mask 
And this one has actually been featured during that Scream promo event that took place in New York, where you could go check out some of the different stab items and they had the full life-size Billy costume in a display case. That mask seems to be the one that is handed to Sam during this scene. So many of you watching may have actually got to see this particular mask in person if you went to that event. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to make it to that one, but it still seems like it was really, really cool and a lot of fun for the people that did get to go. The next one you could call Sam's mask, but personally, I'm gonna call it the Team Loomis mask based on that little line that we got directly from Billy. So this is the one that Sam puts on whenever she gets her revenge and it's also the one that Melissa Barrera got to keep after filming. So I think it would be pretty fair to call it Sam's mask if you want to. I wanna know in the comment section down below, what do you guys think we should call this one? Sam's mask, the Sam revenge mask, or the Team Loomis mask? And the final Billy mask and the final mask that was used in the movie is the end scene mask. This is the one covered in blood that Sam takes a look at before deciding to leave it behind. So, that's pretty much it guys, as far as the different versions of the mask that were used in Scream 6. But before you go, as a quick reminder, pretty much all the different aged masks and the clean EU masks worn by the killers in this film were Fun World's 25th anniversary second run masks. So if you're looking to try and pick up the movie exact masks, that's what you're gonna look for. Fun World has since released an aged ghost face mask as seen in Scream 6, but these are not made using the screen used masks. I believe at one point they were in talk to actually scan and use one of the screen used copies to create replicas for the public, but due to time, they instead had one of their in-house sculptors create this one for public. And it is still a pretty nice replica and we'll review this in a different video. As for the set that I created for myself, I used the same methods that the artist who worked on the film used. I know that all of these aren't gonna come out exactly perfect and accurate, but a good pointer here is, no copies are gonna be the same because even on the film, those copies are different. And the artist created many different versions of each one of the ghost face masks that can be seen in some nice behind the scene photos, which I'll put on screen now. And I gotta say guys, as much as I do love the look of these age masks, I really wish that Fun World would have utilized all of the different sculptures that they've created throughout the years. Think of how cool of a nod that would have been to their history and for us fans who actually know the differences to see all the different versions of the masks that were sculpted and utilized in these films throughout the years. Regardless, I still greatly enjoyed the masks we got. It gives us a lot more interesting history to add to our collections now, if you're interested in that kind of stuff like me. With that being said, I love you all. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and found it useful. Thank you for watching and see you next time. All right, everyone, I just wanna give a quick shout out to Samir Ghazi for helping me out with the screenshots of the masks from the film. And a few different mask guides, Samir's helped me out and he came through yet again. So I wanna give a huge thank you to him for helping me out with this mask guide. And also, something really freaking cool happened while I was editing this video. I got a message from my friend Porter and he showed me some photos that are pretty awesome. He and Dylan Summit both met Dermot Mulroney for some photo ops at a recent convention and they were both dressed up as Scream 6 ghost faces. And whenever they approached, apparently he had some very nice things to say about the masks. And of course there are photos of them wearing masks that I painted for them. And he's even holding one of the Billy masks that I painted. And overall, they got some really awesome photos out of it. And they also said he was a super nice guy to meet. So that's pretty awesome. And I think the perfect way to cap off the Scream 6 movie mask guide. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope you found this helpful. Thank you all for watching and see you next time.